Hi folks and welcome to another episode. This is meant to be a 140,000 mile update on our MG5. It's now 143,000. I just haven't had time to get around to making the video. So I'm gonna show you uh, the brakes. I'm gonna strip the brakes off front and rear, uh, give you a traction battery state of health. I've had a lot of questions about the vehicle uh, on YouTube and uh, various other platforms. Uh, just give you a little look around it and just show you how it's holding up um, and spoiler is holding up really well Please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon So you get notifications each time we upload another video So I thought it was probably better not to just go over the same old stuff um, but uh, we picked up a little bit of damage the other day um, to zoom out a little bit. Uh, we took a new guy out um, and uh, he drove the van and unfortunately um, he managed to scrape it down a wall. So I've picked up that little bit of damage there. Um, I've still got various wall wounds. I've got a little chip there on the, uh, the front wheel arch um, and various bits and bobs dotted around it. Uh, if I come to the back... Um, this is probably where I've leaned in uh, with my knee pads on because I do tend to lean over the van while I'm working uh, or where I, when I'm working away, I'll sometimes park the back into a bush and I could say there's probably some scratches resulting from that as well. Um, I need to talk to you about the tyres. So I've had four new tyres. Now, I had these replaced. Um, the previous Devantes had done 43,000. Uh, I had a really bad day at work. I got two punches in the same day um, and I just thought they're getting close. Let's just put a full set on. So I've got these things. Um, I can't really tell you much about them. Alventi Zeta, the two hundred five sixty sixteens. 16s. Um, well, I'll tell you about them more as I get some more miles on them. They've done about 3,000 so far. They feel okay. But yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't get the Devantes on because of where I was. So um, yeah, the, it just pushed me into a bit of a corner. There's another bit of damage just there on that uh, rear of the bumper. So, but by and large, it's all doing okay. The doors haven't fallen off, so I'm happy with that. So right, let's get inside and just show you a few bits and bobs. So first of all, probably the mileage is what you want. So if I scroll down there, you can see it's done 143,254. And it's at 63% state of charge. <clears throat> now, let's bring my computer back up here. So what you can actually see there is it's at 58.2. So, and that's because what you see and what the state of charge actually is are two very different things. Um, when you're at 100% up here, the state of charge is normally about 5% below. They cross over around about 50%. There's like a point of equilibrium where they cross over and they're accurate. And then when the charge is saying that it's got 10%, it's usually got about 15 So when you get to zero, you've got a bit tucked away. So um, that's how it works. Now let's scroll down to um, state of health. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Um, right, state of health is, it was 91 last time I checked it. Ah, oh, there we go. So, high voltage battery pack, state of health, 91%. I'm a bit surprised. I thought that would have probably dropped off by now. Um, because that's, that's still pretty good for a vehicle that's done, you know, 143,000 plus miles. Um, so I, I'd expect that to drop at least a percent in the next five to 10,000. Now then, uh, the software I've touched on before, it's still working. It is NAF. It's never been anything but lackluster at best, but it does work. So happy with that. Still got the crack in the steering wheel. Hasn't got any worse. Um, that's been there since it was almost brand new when I was loading something in and I managed to smack it onto the steering wheel and it cracked it. Um, but that's just my damage. So I've had a few questions um, from people. So let's just touch on those. Guy called Martin, 
Uh, he's just put a comment on one of my videos saying um, I'm using the MG5 as a taxi. It's faultless, very happy and good range, etc. Um, another guy, 38,000 miles in 18 months, really happy. Um, somebody asking if we got the revised MG5, which, yes, we've got three of those now. Um, and how are they going? Uh, they're going really well, actually. I think they're doing at least as well potentially a little bit better one thing that stuck out to me was uh, we've got a guy called steve who works out in um, well he's based out of norfolk um, he's got the oldest facelift mg5 um, and he managed to do i think he did fifty-three thousand miles on his first set of tires and he didn't rotate those so that to me is quite amazing he doesn't seem to get the same wear pattern that we get on these where they seem to shoulder off so we rotate them and um, that gives us that extra bit of uh, mileage out of them um, another guy uh, my mg5 sr taxi is now 147 580 miles um, i'm th i think i'm starting to see a reduction in range i'd love to know if the state of how i'd love to know the state of health of the uh, traction battery um and another battery at the same age but a lower mileage. He then asks if um, you can put a long range pack in, and yes you can. You can take a long range pack straight out of this car and stick it in an SR and it will just work. Everything's the same, the pipe work, no coding, chuck it in. There are a few other EVs that you can do that with, um, which not many people know about, where you can take a pack from a bigger car and just chuck it straight in yours so um with with no coding um so yeah that's uh, that's quite important um i then got a question from a guy called well it's not really a name um he asks how it drives still uh and it drives beautifully uh but the guy actually who i took out the other day he asked me um he uh, commented actually on how nice it was to drive and he said based on the mileage you're doing it's it's nice to have something like this um he commented on the fact that it's got a few volkswagen paraphernalia bits and bobs in here um but uh yeah it it drives perfectly there's no knocking there's no banging um so fingers crossed so far uh at 143,000 it's it's doing really really well and we're really happy with it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the uh, offside front and offside rear wheel off and just open the calipers up, have a look at the pads and the discs, and I'm just going to run a bar around the suspension just see if anything's knocking. In fact, I'll do the near side because the near side gets the more wear. So if you're likely to have anything going wrong, it tends to happen on that near side front wheel. So I'll do the near side front, near side rear, open the calipers, and we can have a look at those. <laughs> I've gone around all the arms, um, looked at all the bushes on the rear there, everything's tickety-boo, nothing's split, um, anti-roll bar drop link's fine, um, front bush, trap rod end just there, lower ball joint just there, if that's in focus, no leaking on the strut which is uh, quite a common thing on the rears on these, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, and the spring's intact. The only thing I can think is it needs a bit of a clean. And I've noticed that that's missing. There's meant to be one of those just there. So I'm gonna get one of those because that I'll think about it and it'll, it'll probably irritate me. So I've spotted this before. This is the front disc, a little bit of corrosion there. If I come around to the front face, uh, the rear face, beg your pardon. Uh, you can see that looks pretty fresh. Um, and there are my front brake pads. So absolutely loads of meat on those. They're uh, TRW pads, the standard, so they're the good pads. But um, yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I have previously brought a new pad to give you a comparison. And I think it had done 120 
I could put the new pad in and put the caliper straight on without retracting the piston, which is what you have to do. Um, on an electric car, clearly the brakes don't get used. So front suspension, everything's looking groovy, really happy. Uh, apart from that clip missing from over there, let's go and have a look at the back. Okay, so first of all, this rear shock. This has definitely got some misting there, but nothing at the foul and MOT. And I can't feel anything. What you tend to find is when the shock is gone, because um, the shock absorbs the energy that's stored in the spring, the spring actually absorbs the shock. Um, but what will happen is if you didn't have a shock absorber, it would just bounce up and down and that energy, as that energy is released, uh, and then the shock dampens that um, and turns the energy into heat. Um, but what you find when these have gone is this rear wheel will start to jump off the floor um, and you get a real impact on the handling um, and braking. Uh, but I've not felt any of that, but um, these are not expensive and they're very, very easy to change. Two bolts there, bolt there, out it comes. And you can do this in situ because uh, it's a solid back beam. So the other side will hold it in place. So all you need to do is undo that, lift the shocker up um, and then uh, pull it out. Now I'm always pulling customers for this and that is the state of the wheel arches because these brake line ferrules, the dirt that sits around them um, in the winter absorbs salt and then that attacks the, the ferrule itself. So I'm always saying to customers, fresh water, just wash it out uh, and that'll look after it. And then generally what I do is I clean them and spray them with a bit of grease just to protect them. Um, so I should heed my own advice there. Um, but rear caliper, sliders are free I'm just gonna use a little flat screwdriver just to pop that out there we go and there you have it absolutely lovely There's, that's that's pretty much as they come out of the box um, no real corrosion on there um, that disc is fine there's no brake judder on the vehicle so let's pop that back in see if we can get the inner pad out let's give that a little Push that. There it goes. Oh, there you go. That's also looking lovely. And let's have a feel of the interface. Let's see if we can see it actually. I can't actually see that, but I'll have a look at the video afterwards. But yeah, happy with that. So over 140,000 miles and brake pads that just do not need changing. When I used to work in a garage, I typically see internal combustion cars coming in for at least front disc and pads, uh, between 30 and 40,000 miles, depending on the nature of the work they were doing. Taxes a lot less. Um, so yeah, we're really happy with that. The savings on maintenance on this vehicle are just absolutely incredible. So right, let's get the wheels back on. I will comment again on the racking. Please don't judge me on the state of this. It did 1,600 miles last week. It had a really hard week, but the racking that went in this, which was done by a company called CVA in Hinkley, Complete Vehicle Accessories, has been brilliant. It's been absolutely faultless. And these guys do all of our vehicles and they do it for that reason. It's very, very, very good. Now, the other really important point for us is the the cost savings we we didn't really do it for cost we did it for the fact that we knew it wouldn't break down it's just that the maintenance savings and the fuel savings have been humongous so to date this has saved us over seventeen thousand pounds against a equivalent ford focus diesel astra diesel uh in fuel uh, and the maintenance which is very difficult to work out but chuck a couple of cam bouts on maybe a dpf or a dpf regen and that's it it's 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 the miles apart but again, that's not why we did it. Um, it's because we couldn't afford the time off the road for servicing and things like that. Um, and this vehicle hasn't been serviced. Now, I'm not trying to condone that um, because I know that for warranty, you need to do it. Uh, but for us, we weren't fussed about warranty. The warranty was out at 80,000 miles, which was about 18 months. Um, so we, we've we never bothered. I think actually that caliper, that's the first time that caliper has been opened. Um, that one, I think I've opened once for a video um the wheels come off the tires and that is that is pretty much it um so you wouldn't do yourself an injustice by buying one of these because and i stand by this these are solid reliable cars 
Um, I would definitely get the facelift if it's for a family car because the overcome some of the shortfalls of the pre-facelift model uh, is just better looking, LED headlights, software is better, the interior is nicer. Um, it's just a bit more of a European English sort of directed car. Um, this is very Chinese looking. Uh, but that aside, the underpinnings are the same. So um, yeah, if, you, if you're thinking about it and you want reliability, you'll definitely get it from this. I get asked about how do I feel about depreciation? Um, and they have depreciated because new car costs have come down so much. So naturally the second hour market drops. Um, we're not really worried about that. Um, we're running it into the ground, but when we look at the maintenance savings and the fuel savings, it completely outweighs any depreciation. I think as it stands, this is worth six or seven grand. Somebody stick it in motorway. You can see the reg, uh, Charlie Foxtrot 71 X-Ray Foxtrot Victor. 143 254 miles so somebody do it and let me know in the comments what it's worth um but yeah we we, we weren't in it for depreciation we were in it purely for convenience so yeah don't overlook the mg5s they're a very very good vehicle okay folks i'm gonna leave it there um i hope that's give you a little bit of an insight into how well this has gone and how much i love it this is uh my chinese wife um i spend more time with this car than i do with my girls um uh, but i'm very pleased to report that it looks after me massively so thank you for watching and uh we'll see you soon in another episode so bye for now